212 will be slid over a little bit uh, with the new proposed bridge opening. So, uh, an alternate to raising 212 to impound the water would be to raise the berm. Uh, currently, DEC prefers removal of the berm uh, for several reasons, floodplain enhancements being only one. It is not uh, mapped for FEMA floodplain protection. Uh, we also know that in actuality it does not provide flood protection at these higher storm events. It's within the regulatory floodway, uh, so adding fill in there really isn't an option without somehow accommodating that same flow area somewhere else. Um, Right now, it's preventing spillover out of the channel uh, at low events, out of you know the low flow channel, if you will, low events. This is increasing velocities and stream scour and transport of sediment to the reservoir. Um, if we raise it and impound the water with the berm, that's going to significantly increase upstream water elevations, which also uh, is basically in direct conflict with uh, community uh, plans and wishes and it was also a violation of floodplain regulation. Uh, so the raising of the berm was deemed not appropriate and that plan was discarded. Uh, basically a flood control wall would be the exact same reasoning as this. Uh, additionally a flood control wall uh, would not allow access to the river which both the town and the county want uh, to keep active as it's a popular fishing area. Uh, so then uh, in the Malone and McBroom uh, town LFA report, uh, that additional floodplain enhancement that Aaron was showing with the, the red outline uh, is another part of the plan. Um, but in order to do that, that flood control berm needs to be decertified uh, by the Army Corps of Engineers. The berm can then be removed and we can actually over excavate that berm to provide additional flow area uh, under the bridge for these larger storm events. Um, You're talking on the west side? Yes, they're the south side, the, the, the 212 west. side. 212. Yeah, yes. basically right where the berm is, yeah. over digging it out, over excavating it uh, on the inside of the bend. Uh, if we just remove the berm itself, uh, we're only going to get about a six inch change in the Q100 elevation because it's significantly overtopped as it is. If you over excavate, you, we might be able to get up to an additional foot of uh, water drop at the Q100 elevation. And that has significant impacts both for the bridge elevation, uh, the accompanying roadway elevations tying in, uh, and uh, property floodplain elevations upstream. I'm sorry, Richard. Yep. Susan, you're talking about the side towards 212. Going yeah, the, the side for basically. Okay. Uh, so over and excavate. What is that? Take, take more of that dirt yeah. out. Even though you remove the berm, there's still an elevation there of dirt. So we need to take another foot. So instead of just coming down to this elevation and coming straight across, we would actually come down a foot or two below that. So on the creek side, there'd be a, a, a more severe. No, we would actually, it would actually come from back here and we would bench it out flat. And so basically, uh, let me see if I, basically from about halfway up the existing berm would be cut off further behind the berm. So instead of just taking the berm out, we would take it out and then actually dig it deeper as like a reverse berm, if you will. Okay. So instead of a bump. I, I got right. 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 All right. <laughs> So again, that, that has several benefits, uh, not just for up, uh, the roadway um, elevations, but also floodplain elevations upstream and then potential uh, help with flood of So uh, basically, I could have just gone to the next slide. Uh, so the berm is here, it's a little tough to see on this one, but basically we would take the berm out and over excavate uh, about 200 feet away from the stream uh, and just have a bench instead of a, a net, uh, embankment. So again, the DOC intentions, gonna replace the bridge on the downstream side, significantly enlarge the structure uh, to meet uh, the current bridge design manual, which includes uh, hydraulic adequacy. It also includes increasing flows for future climate change. 
and includes increased free board because it's critical infrastructure. Uh, we're going to do our best to meet or exceed the standard one foot rise criteria for new encroachments, although uh, legally DOT just needs to lower the floodplain by 0.01 foot. We're going to maximize the amount that we can lower the floodplain uh, in conjunction with the plan and the county's uh, wishes. Uh, we want to lift up 212, um, not only to prevent it from flooding, but also to ensure that all the water is able to go under the bridge. And we want to remove the berm and provide those additional floodplain enhancements um, for all the various reasons. Um, again, it should be up to 800 foot, or I'm uh, sorry, 800 foot minimum, up to 900, 950 feet maximum probably. We're uh, going to remove the piers from the main part of the channel. The north side pier uh, may still stay. That was the one that had one tree on it versus the, the significant uh, bottleneck, which is closer to the burn. Uh, and uh, it looks like the low court is going to go up at least four and a half feet in conjunction with the span uh, being over twice as long. Uh, and again, the, 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 it kind of looks like this, uh, the red is the existing opening and the gray is what's kind of proposed with the existing roadway here and then uh, so all the hatched area is currently blocked and uh, it's proposed to be opened up and in terms of the stream profile we're looking at up to four foot drop in the immediate vicinity of the bridge uh, the upstream benefits are still unknown and uh, i'm working on extending my model upstream uh, in order to more uh, easily identify the limit of benefits to upstream. Uh, as mentioned, uh, the old abandoned county bridge will also be removed, which may provide some uh, nominal uh, improvement as well. And that's pretty much what I have from the engineering side of the new bridge. <coughs> putting in is yep. going to be built downstream of the existing bridge? That's the current uh, right. preferred option. Right. And how long will that bridge be? In other words, where the existing bridge on the west side is now, the end of it, how much farther would that bridge go? Uh, on the west end, probably, we're, we're ending before the anybody, the driveway on the north side, uh, the guy has the property you built up on top of the hill, that, that's your property. We're ending before that driveway. Uh, that's, we're trying to make sure is, is that's the limit there where we're done with bridge work. Okay, so the driveway shouldn't be an issue. Correct. No, we will not. They, it's part of one of our design parameters that we're just trying to stay away from getting into that. So I think we're successful on that. Right, so, so in other words, where 28 is now, I'll have to cross the existing 28 to get to the 28. Correct. Yeah. So who's going to handle that pavement and all of that? That, was that will be handled in the bridge process. They will, they will, uh, your new driveway will be part of our design plans as okay. a new build out. And with the new grade change, we're not sure because you're at the end of the bridge with the exact, it won't be four and a half feet there, but it'll be, right. there'll be a raise in 28 there. So we'll design a bridge that has a, uh, a good uh, drivable slope on it in it. That extends eight thousand. That's actually one of the reasons why downstream is a little better because you do have a steep driveway, and if we went upstream, you'd have a harder time connecting with that. Right, because there are other alternatives if the driveway didn't have, you know, wasn't accessible anymore. We we could fit the eight hundred to nine hundred feet long with using your driveway is kind of kind of the western limit, and the flow tends to flow towards two twelve on the inside, so that's the you know, more natural way to widen the bridge anyway. It's it's kind of where the flow wants to go. Right. So the more widening is happening on the east side than the west, a longer line. One thing our, our main office structures group has been looking at, because we do have a want to have a long span in the middle to avoid the piers, is that uh, there probably is actually going to be some sort of uh, arch effect to the bridge as you're driving over it, and shorter spans on, over the floodplain with shallower beams. So just because the middle of the bridge may be 
up to six feet higher on the road, the ends of the bridge may only be a couple of feet higher um, because of how they're designed. Uh, Route 212, you say it's going to be raised? Yes, the portion uh, that's low will be raised 9 to 11 feet. 9 to 11 feet. Which roughly correlates uh, to Rob and Aaron's uh, presentation about the one house, how much higher the, the water was in the road. Uh -huh. it, the road, the road was, is going to be up Right, the basically road is basically taking the berm, taking the berm, putting it under 212 so that right. You know, when you're coming off the 28, you've got that dip that you go down and then you come off like Timmy's house. You're not going to have Basically, not going to look and have that straightened right out. So that way it doesn't go over that side of 212. So where would everybody start with the one? Where would you start going up with 212? Right at 28, and then basically where the corner is, uh, just past the post office. How far back are you going with this? You're going to start just slow, I presume, right? We're going to try to hold the western or southern side of 212 with the embankment and then build it up towards the river. Is the current point. Yeah, we're trying to impact the prop minimize our impact the properties to the uh, north side of, of 212 there, like right, no, right south. West I, yeah, I'm getting my direction. Yeah, uh, you know, by keeping the embankment and shifting it towards the creek. Yes. On 212 itself, um, I sat there. I live right on 212. And I moved the house. The septic is about 20 feet from the road. Will that affect it? any um, portion of uh, raising 212? It, it will not, because uh, we're, pull, pull we're, pulling the, the we're pulling the road away from your house. Okay. Uh, even though it's, it's, it's getting higher, the, the slope may come out towards your driveway. Uh, we should not, our, our grading limit should be at, towards the edge of the road. It's so easier to have a driveway like that, coming out on the You'll have a steeper driveway. Oh, like I said, well, the, where my pointer is showing, uh, and the, if the road gets raised over here, this side will be lower than the road, but significantly, so yeah, there will have to be some driveway work done to make appropriate driveways uh, for the, the residences that are still on the side or had moved up the hill. Don't forget there's a creek behind. Yes, uh, we're also, uh, as you mentioned, that that creek comes down here and comes through here, and we are planning on replacing that culvert as well. Uh, what, as I'm aware, there's a history what of about the that's on the other side of uh, uh, 28, the old uh, Burnett House that was sold. This one? Uh, on the other side. Well, that one, oh, was one? That's a, that was, I think, that was a theme of prior property. No, it's Burnout. So, Burnout. Oh, right where it's in the Burnout. Right, 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 right. right. Yeah. <laughs> Not there. A little bit further away. On the okay. mountain side of uh, 28, further over, further over. 28. We don't have any impact at that point. Because the water backs up underneath that cover that's underneath uh, 212 to 28. And that'll be right. part of our, we're, we're going to resolve that issue also as part of this project. You have to put a bridge in between where she has a garage on the other side of 28, on the mountain side of 28, on the uh, Venetian. Or else you won't solve anything. It'll still fly down to 212 because it's all back up. Um, after when the meeting's over, show me uh, more specifically, and, and uh, I'll be able to help out, I think, a little better. Okay. I think I'm just getting a little confused as to what I'm doing. I'm assuming the bridge will be wider for bike paths. Uh, yeah, there's going to be, what's the shoulder width going to be? I believe it's going to have a 10 foot shoulder on your side. Eight, 8 to 10 foot shoulder on your like side. Like the two bridges going west. Yeah. 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 Yes. Any other questions? So the temporary bridge will be on the rock cut side? We're actually not going to do a temporary bridge. We're just going to build a new bridge uh, that is next to it, and we're going to leave the existing bridge open until the new bridge is ready. Nice. So the new bridge is going to be on the, on the rock cut side? Yeah. yeah. Did you see how, they, how they're 
just finishing the big Indian project yeah. and they built it alongside it. We're doing a similar idea here. Except can you tell me exactly how far up 212 that room work is going to go? Uh, yeah, somewhere in this general area. I don't know from that little red dot. A little bit. That it's, doesn't help. A little bit past the post yeah. office. This is the post office. You know what Byron Homestead is, the green one? Yeah. Right there. Right there. Okay. okay. And then the rest of it will be? We're not touching the rest yeah. of it. The post office is obviously gone. Uh, yes, yeah, Rob can speak to that a little more. Yeah. Um, again, we have another location within Mount Trump and Mount Pleasant that's going to host the post office. Again, we don't want to lose the post office because it does create that identity. And we saw it again. Mount Pleasant closed their post office. Everybody started going to Mount Trepper. Now it may be that the Mount Trepper post office may relocate over to Mount Pleasant just so we maintain it. Um, and sorry, but again. Just, we saw it get blown up in Irene. I mean, there was a considerable amount of work in that post office that was done in post Irene. And that's why it was shut down. So. Um, I know John has maps, or Phil has maps, showing some of the stuff with the work with the, for the Green Bridge. And I'm sorry, but I have to go because I have a funeral to attend to with Alicia. So I've got to head out. But um, if you have any questions or comments, you can always certainly email us at the town. Uh, we can forward it to the DMT reps or to anybody else, county, and likewise. Any questions, any concerns, please. We want to try to stay ahead of this, and I want to thank you all again for coming. And uh, these guys will be around for questions for a little bit afterwards, right? Yes. Yeah. As, as you come up with a better design, you're going to do another one with me. Is you required to do another Yes. It's, it's weird. If you're the owner of one of the properties that's inspected by this, you know that you've been. Uh, you know, sign on to the DP buyout program as, as a, a way of, uh, you know, procuring your property for the flood improvements and also the bridge project. Uh, we will have another meeting follow up here probably around beginning of August. Uh, when our pro we need a federal review before we can go to our, uh, uh, our procedure law meeting, uh, which really involves uh, our property acquiring process for anybody who doesn't opt into the DEP buyout process. We'll put on a similar meeting, but it'll probably be more a quick presentation and you know, just a lot of, of question and answers at different stations around here. Uh, you know, uh, you know, the state does have the eminent domain procedure law uh, for. Uh, Acquiring land that's necessary for our highway bridge improvement projects, you know, and, and we have to go through the process that's required uh, by us by New York State. And, and that, so that that meeting will be. Me. Affected property owners in that area, I stress. Go to meet with Aaron, get the proper authorization form, talk to DEP. There's no guarantee you don't have to do the buyout with them, but they. they them on. Um, and I think DEP is a very solid option. Um, again, I want to thank you all for coming. These folks will be around for questions and answers for a little bit, and we will have subsequent meetings. And you can always email me, Shandy at supervisory Okay? Thank you, folks. Did any of your questions? Raise your hand or take whatever you have. What was your timeline then? Nothing was going on. Well, our timeline was um, we were going to start the final design in the summer. And that's about a 12 month process, finished highway design and door design. Next fall, the project would go out to bid to the contract the community. And then the bridge replacement project would most likely start spring of 2020. Uh, our process is slow, uh, but uh, it, is normal, it is a normal schedule for us on the project. On both of these, these processes. Uh, we, we have to give time. A lot of time is for